Welcome. It's Wednesday, April 22nd. The time is 4.13. This is a special committee of the whole uh, meeting for the District of Seashell. So good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Today we have members of the public joining us through the Zoom online meeting platform, some from their computers and some by phone. The process for public participation will be the same as it was for a regular face-to-face -face public council meeting. So we ask that you hold your questions until the end of the meeting. Everyone is automatically muted, muted when they join the Zoom meeting. After adjournment, if you have logged in online, there are two ways you can ask a question. You may use the raise hand feature at the bottom of the Zoom screen, or you can type your question into the Q&A section. We may respond verbally or in writing. Attendees will be unmuted as needed. For people joining with a telephone line only, Please stay on the line if you would like to ask a question. Use the shortcut star nine to raise your virtual hand if you have a question. So I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask if there are any declarations of conflict from council. And seeing none, are there any changes to the agenda? May I then ask for the adopted agenda to be, or for the amended agenda to be adopted. I see a first and second, all in favor. So moved. Uh, seeing no appointments or delegations or new business, we shall move on to 5.1, provincial government COVID-19 measures. And I'm assuming Mr. Douglas is gonna speak to this. Yep, um, I'm going to share the um, my screen here. And tell me if the, you need the font to be bigger. So over the last number of days, we've had uh, significant changes to um, our world in in, um, in in with regards to taxation, the collection of taxation um how the province is uh, looking at changing uh, some of the due dates and um and um so there there's a couple of new uh, press releases that have come out that uh, i've included in the agenda and the things that we want to take out of this is really um in this first little area um they are going to be the province is going to be reducing the school tax on commercial properties, and that's pro property classes number four, five, six um, for the 2020 tax season. Um, they are also um, going to be extending the date of which the payment for commercial taxes for those classes to be paid. Uh, the due date would be uh, September 30th, 2020 and that a penalty could apply on October 1st. So, so these, are, these are two of the bigger items that have uh, come through in the last uh, week and we're, we as staff are trying to keep up with uh, all the announcements and uh, try and find out what uh, ramifications there are uh, for the district and uh, what we may have to do differently um, to uh, counteract or to be able to survive uh, financially or uh, cash flow more than anything else uh, from here until uh, people have paid their taxes. Um, just right at the bottom of the top of this, uh, this page, <clears throat> it highlights the, um, the mill rates that they're looking at for, prop for commercial property taxes. And um, this is 1.10. Uh, for business, uh, zero for managed force, and 0.7844. Now, although that doesn't affect the district uh, from what it collects, um, two significant things here is that they don't expect the, the district to pay these funds until the end of December, and that the district can use these, these funds as operating funds uh, to help the cash flow during the period of which um, they've uh, allowed the businesses to pay at a later date. So then uh, uh, Lidstone and Company issued um, another uh, doc document that basically follows the same description. Um, 
uh, as a province. And I've included here just for councils, uh, the community of the whole to, to read and go over. So, so what does it mean to the district that the province wants to delay uh, the payment of uh, business class uh, property taxes? So to us, it means that we will not collect uh, immediately about uh, one point uh, one point one eight million dollars. Uh, that's just for the the, the district alone. Uh, but when you add on the other taxes, um, you know we're probably looking at almost two million dollars that we won't receive till uh, September thirtieth, thirtieth, uh, two thousand twenty. Um, so so the district. So I've started to look at our cash flows and what we need to have and uh, be able to pay out um, sooner rather than later. And um, this sheet shows some of the larger payments that we're going to have to make by the early August. And there's two different dates there and we'll, I'll go through those in a minute. But essentially by early August, we have to come be able to pay $8 million out. And this would go to the regional district uh, for 6.3 million, the hospital district, three, 371,000, BC assessment, 177,000, a municipal finance authority, $813. Uh, we have another payment we have to make by July 15th, and that's to the Seashell Downtown Business Association for 70,000. And the Seashell Fire District, I, I just got their new, uh, uh, tax rates for 2020 like an hour ago and did the calculation so as you can see I originally said 1.2 million plus or minus but that number is 1.383 million dollars that is paid out by September 30th 2020. So what are we going to do about that? So the first thing that the district would like to do uh, is to prepare and put forward a revenue anticipation borrowing bylaw. This bylaw would allow us to borrow. Could I could I interrupt for a second? Because I have yeah. a couple of questions. So just yeah. some clarity. Okay. Uh, page three. Page so this three. is the first new relief news release. Okay. So it says they have postponed the date that late payment penalties apply. I don't see in here that they say there's uh, that they've actually changed the due date. So is uh, that something that we need to set? They well, they no. Uh, the community charter is pretty clear that the due date is July third, July second. Hang on, let me look on my board. July second. Okay. Now, so, so they're, they're saying that for pro commercial properties, we cannot charge. A penalty until October first. Okay. So, um, yeah, okay. So then that means they're not changing the due date, but they're allowing uh, businesses to pay late without penalty to right. September thirtieth. Right. Yes. Okay. So that's the one. Um, okay. I think the rest is clear. Okay. Okay. Oh. Uh, are you done then, Madam yes. Mayor? Yes, thank you. Uh, Councillor McLean has a question to you, Mr. Douglas. Okay. We're a line of questioning, just so I'm 100% clear. Um, so there's no incentive for a business to pay their taxes on time. Or... Right, yes, correct. I mean, the only incentive is that they would like to pay them, but there is no, no intended <laughs> penalty for July 2nd. And the first penalty date that we can apply penalty to would be October 1st for business. Okay, so in effect, we'll be telling people it's due July 2nd, but you may as well pay by October 1st. As, as it sits right now, but this is changing um, <laughs> daily. <laughs> so, so right now, it's just that uh, we will not, we're not expecting business payments until late September. And yep. there will be no penalty until October 1st. Okay. That's okay. on commercial only. 
commercial only yet. So Thank you. those three classes, four, five, and six. Is that it, Councilor McLean? And Sorry. Se seven and eight as well. Four, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Any other right. questions before Mr. Douglas moves on? Nope. All right, carry on. Okay, thank you. So through the community charter, the district is allowed to put together a revenue anticipation borrowing. And this borrowing is, is, re, is against expected revenues. So this isn't intended to be long-term borrowing. It's very short term. Uh, you're allowed up to 75% to, to borrow up to 75% of your expected revenues. Um, and so uh, the district staff have already put together a bylaw that will present next week uh, in the amount of $12 million uh, to cover us if we find that the payments uh, will not be able to meet our uh, expected outflows of cash. It would be intended that the municipality or the district would be out of borrowing, would not be borrowing uh, by the end of the year if we dip into this, um, because uh, most of our revenues come from residential taxation and we will be expecting uh, payment from residences or residential uh, taxpayers on July 2nd. So, okay, so I just got to go back to the agenda item here for a second. So before you go on, I think there was one other piece, and that was that on page nine, I'm sure it's somewhere else in here too. Uh, there it is, it's on page six as well, property tax measures. So we will collect the school tax revenue but we do not need to pay that until Correct. the end of the year. So it kind of gives us a little bit of cash flow buffer. And um, I'll just, I, what I've included here is how much we collected last year in, um, uh, so this is what we're expecting to collect this year. I've uh, put the new tax rates that the province has published, but hasn't approved yet. Uh, so this is, says estimated right here. This you got to understand. This is an estimated number. Mm -hmm. So that there's five million dollars that are potential cash flows that the district can use, but we'll need to pay by the end of December to school tax. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Councillor Toth has a question, Mr. Douglas. Okay. Yep. Just before we move on, the um, revenue anticipation borrowing. Uh, what are the costs on that for us as a municipality, like interest rate or, or fees and, and charges that might be on it? Um, I was talking to the MFA yesterday uh, and um, just to confirm that they're going to be working hard to have the cash at hand, at which they are. And um, he didn't have an exact rate, but between two and a half and three and a half percent is what he's talking. And what about terms? Like, well, it it is uh, fully intended to be short term, and I believe you have like you have about a year to pay it back before you send out your next tax notice. I think you're supposed to be off of the uh, the borrowing. But you know, if things go as as it would normally go, once you start hitting tax due dates with penalties, um, people tend to pay. Okay. Any other questions before Mr. Douglas carries on? Nope. All right, carry on, Mr. Douglas. Okay. And so, although I just said that we're expecting to receive 5 million or from the school tax and be able to utilize until December, that's just that's a change of about eight hundred thousand from the previous year, so that's that's the benefit that the um, the province is giving to businesses within our jurisdiction about eight hundred thousand dollars. That that was an interesting number. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, now, now, because we are not expecting the business classes to pay until uh, October or end of September, through the community charter, um, it allows council to, although the, the cap on the penalty is 10% for the year, we are, the municipality or districts can uh, split that up in, in almost any way they feel would help their, um, or be a benefit to their taxpayers. And so currently we do have a different scheme. A lot of municipalities charge the 10% on the day after your tax due date. Uh, the district of Seashelf has a 5% penalty on the day after and a further 5% at the end of August. These numbers can be changed. It can be, uh, as long as they add up to 10% for the tax year, um, these can be altered. Um, staff, um, why this has come up? Because there's been some discussion about also helping business. Uh, do we want to hit them with a 10% on October 1st? Do we want to be 5% on October 1st? Uh, do we want to be something different on October 1st? And a lot of that will does depend on how long this affects the local economy, uh, but we have to pass this prior to knowing how long um, this would affect the local economy. So I guess this would be a discussion point for the committee uh, of how they see I guess first the business class uh, penalties rolling out, and then there's been some discussion on uh, on the residential too. All right, well, let's have some discussion on that then. Um, comments from council? Uh, Councillor Todd? I'm, I'm fairly content to defer to others or to defer to staff on it but i would like to see the penalties loaded towards the end of the year uh both residential and commercial yes we have to do something on july 3rd um but but maybe it's one percent july 3rd and then nine percent november 1st or something like that i just i'd like to see it loaded as far out to the end of the year as we can but other than that i'm i'm willing to defer to staff on it I just wanted to make a comment that the less penalty you have on July 3rd will be a less of a motivation for people to pay their taxes on that day. We have costs that we have to make. We have, um, and so as, as much as I, I hear what council's saying, we would like to have the penalty at an appropriate amount that we know we will be receiving a, a fair amount of taxation by July 2nd. Uh, Mayor Seegers. So I have two questions. One is what would the interest penalty need to be that would encourage people to pay but not overly penalize those who can't afford to pay beginning of July? Was that 2%? Is that 3%? I mean, personally, I think 1% is probably too low. But is 2% the number? Is 3% the number? I don't know. All right, so I kind of throw that out to you. The other, the other thing, um, for my other job, I've actually been looking at tax deferrals. Because one of the things I didn't know, and I found out recently, was that not only can those 55 and over, I think it's 55 and over, uh, can defer their property taxes, but so can families. The criteria is a little different. And actually, if I find my, where I wrote that down, here it is. Um, if, if a property owner has, a, they must have at least 25% equity in their property, and then they can defer their property taxes. If it's families with children, they need to have uh, at least 15% equity in their property. 
interest rate that they're charged is slightly different. It's actually 2% higher for families with children. I have no idea why I asked and they couldn't tell me, um, but it's based on the BC assessed value. So it's not an appraised value or whatever, but if they look at their assessed value on their property, if they have, they must have over 15%, they can actually defer their taxes. So I don't know if that's something that's commonly known out there, but that might be something else for us to get on board with to ensure people in the community know that because that's another way that we would get paid and it wouldn't then penalize them. They would pay, you know, it, it gets, it goes against their, their title, but they actually pay their taxes. So back to the first question, what percentage would we set that would incentivize people to pay, but wouldn't penalize them too much? Great. And yeah, question to the mayor is, uh, since you looked up these rates for the deferral program, what is the interest rate? And maybe we could match ours to somewhere similar. 1.95 for the regular program and 3.95 if it's for families with children. Okay, so I see either 2 or 4%, somewhere in that kind of range. Um, it gives people options. So I, I definitely agree that 1% is too low. Um, I also want to say off the bat right now is that I believe we should still have at least one deadline on July 3rd for residential. We need to get some tax money flowing in. So we need to have something there for sure. Yeah, we, we won't be changing that due date, um, but that's where the penalty would be the incentive for residences, yes. Other comments or questions from council? I'm not sure. Is Tom, is that your hand up? Yes. yes. Okay, Councillor uh, Lamb. Yeah, just the other thing is we're going to have uh, penalties from uh, our borrowing money to uh, offset the, the monies that don't come in. So, you know, we're going to be, you're going to have to be three, minimum 3% to, uh, so just to cover our extra costs. And Councillor Toss? Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, in terms of the percentage rate, it doesn't make a huge difference, I think, for that first penalty, unless you're living in a multi-million dollar home. Uh, I had a number of years in a row uh, where I wasn't able to pay my taxes by July 2nd, and that penalty cost, uh, I just considered it part of my tax bill. Um, and that was a choice that I made. Uh, and it wasn't I think it was, it ended up being like 50 or $60 for our household. So it's not, you know, it's not a huge burden unless you've got a multi-million dollar home. And hypothetically, if you have a multi-million dollar home, you're in a better situation to be paying your taxes on time anyways. Hypothetically. Uh, any, uh, Councillor McLean? Yeah, just to move this conversation along, I'm gonna yep. throw out a proposal. Um, so currently we have 5% July 3rd, I'd say keep that, and move the August 1st deadline to October 1st for the second 5% on the residential side. And then on the business side, um, currently it's essentially 10% on October 1st per the provincial regulation. Um, I would like to see that reduced to 5% on October 1st and another 5% on December 31st. Are you making that, is that a motion? Yeah, let's uh, move that as a motion. Is that a second, Councillor Toth? So we have a motion on um, the floor, which has been seconded. Any further conversation on this topic? Uh, Mayor Seegers? You're muted. Sorry, thank you. Um, so you're proposing 5% on October 1st for business and then the other 5% when? December 31st. Essentially we get a break in when we have to pay. So let's extend that for businesses as well. Is that it, Mayor? You're good. And Matt, uh, Councillor McLean, I still have your hand up. 
but did you want to say anything else? No. No. Okay. Can I just ask you to repeat your motion before we go to vote? Yeah, before I do that, um, I, I do want to check quickly with staff about the December 31st deadline. Just thinking now that it, we don't really have staff in the office, so maybe we want to oh, good point. see what the feasibility of that is. So the, just the only problem I see there is we'll be paying school tax so right at that same time. So, you know, people will be potentially paying at a time we're pushing money out. And so it's, it's not that staff can't do it that way. It's just the crossover of money or cash flows. Um, I, um, from a staff perspective, I would, I would like to see December 1st, December 1st. Um, which gives us enough time to make sure if we don't have the monies, we have the cash coming in off the uh, revenue anticipation loan. Um, having them on the same day, we'd probably have to borrow no matter what, just to, if, you know, if we didn't have the money in the bank today, we'd be borrowing to make sure it was there. Okay, oh, if somebody wants to amend that, I'd welcome it. Oh, uh, I think Mayor Seegers had her hand up first there. Yeah, I think, so I'll amend to December 1st for the second 5%, and it looks like Councillor Toth will second that. Okay. So then the motion reads uh, for commercial 5% on October 1st and 5% on December 1st. Okay. So all in favor? Hey, what are we voting on here? We have to vote on the amendment first, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I'm so confused. Okay. All right. Um, so we have a, an amended motion. Um, and the amendment is that the second 5% is due on December 1st, not December 31st, correct? For commercial. For commercial property. And we have a second on that. And all in favor. Okay. So that, so can you repeat your motion then, Matt, with the amended piece? Because now yeah. I'm get now I'm confused on the, uh, Residential. We okay. Can actually go to the, we can actually go to the recorder for that if you like. Yeah. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, yeah. just corporate officer here. I could read back what we have just to be sure we're clear. Sure. Thanks. Uh, so we have that uh, the tax penalty rate for residential be 5% uh, as of July 3rd. And then uh, the current August 1st deadline that our tax rate bylaw usually would be extended to October 1st. The second 5% penalty would be October 1st. And then for commercial, now that this amendment has passed, uh, it would be that uh, the first 5% penalty would be on October 1st, and then the second 5% on December 1st. And that would require a tax bylaw to come back that will reflect that. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further discussion on that? All in favor. Hey, what about me? No, no I think. <laughs> yeah, what? Tom. Oh, sorry, Tom. I'm hey. sorry. I can't see. I can't see your hand. There you go. Uh, further discussion, Councillor Lamb. Yeah, just um, you're, you're mentioning commercial tax, but it's it's the category four, five, six, seven, and eight. So should we include that? Because there is a uh, there is a I think number five is a commercial tax. Madam Chair, correct. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. We'll make sure the resolution is very clear that it reflects the tax, uh, the tax uh, categories that are listed in the pr uh, province's news release. There's Great. several of them there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Are we good to vote? All in favor? Here we go, and that is passed. Thank you for that direction. Okay, so that completes item um, five point direct relative to tax penalties. Um, so that completes up to, up to and including item 5.3, am I correct? 
I should tax due dates and tax penalties. Right? Yes. So yes. we're moving on to uh, item 5.4. So 5.4 is uh, general revenue operating revenues. And um, so in going through, going through and uh, trying to set the tax rates and getting the completed role uh, just recently, um, there was a, a change that I, I can't explain yet. I've phoned BC assessment. Um, this is uh, the slide from a previous council meeting or committee of the whole meeting. Um, it shows that the new construction value that we were relying on for revenues was $20 million. And when I got the completed role, that had changed down to $10 million. So that's okay. a... Could that's you a, zoom in a little bit? Zoom in, sure. Thank so you. That, that for us is about a... Uh, $23,000, $24,000 uh, difference in taxation. So that's the, this is what I've been working off of in the preliminary budget discussion. And this is the revised rule. Is that big enough? Uh, yeah. This is the revised rule showing the $10 million. So, um, so from just taxation, we're short by $20,000, $23,000 uh, from where we ended last time just due to this difference. Which, which, so I haven't looked at that. I couldn't figure out which numbers you were looking at before. So that's the non-market, non-market change total, 10 million. That's the, that's the vacant land, right? Vacant land and. Oh, that's total residential there. Right. But if you look at the non-market changes total, there's a lot yeah. there in, um, the yeah, but vacant, right? Right, but we do our estimates off this residential total, right? So we know included in here is new construction. They've taken out uh, the Sea Watch properties. That's what the big deduction here is. And when you get to a total at the bottom here, uh, it's ten million versus it, we were working off twenty million dollars. Okay, so can you explain the difference in the taxes, the impact for the impact the, is hmm. less tax by 23 minutes, 23, sorry, $23,000. And it, there's no real explainable um, reason why it dropped. Um, I phoned them a couple times and we're, they haven't, they're, they're not working in the office either. Um, I've, my assessor's out of town till May 11th, but I've, Phoned uh, uh, somebody in the somebody different in the office to get a different assessor to call me, um, but I, I just can't. Uh, this is what it is, and and we have. I just have to deal with the with this. Well, Councillor McLean. Yeah, could this be um, from people appealing their assessments? Uh, usually, the appeals. Um, it could be some of that. Um, some of the appeals come in a little later, uh, but I, you know, I was really, I really wanted to try and find out why. Um, so I, I had an explanation for you. Okay, thanks. Um, other questions or comments on this? Uh, Councillor McLean? So given that we have a shortfall, um, are we essentially gonna look at making it up from uh, the rest of the tax base? That, that would be um, my, my preferred. Um, we, we have a second issue that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and, um, but this one, yes, I would say that, yeah. Okay. Okay, so Mr. Douglas, as far as is this, you're just letting us know this is out there and then we're gonna keep discussing the agenda items? Um, or, yeah, or, we, we can go to the next item because it's going to be related. Right, okay, so why don't we do that? Okay. So, um, 
So the next item uh, which Matt brought up uh, at the last meeting was about appropriate level of penalty income that we have. And, you know, I believe that if, if the province and, you know, the changes that they're recommending stayed as they were, uh, we would be fine with this level of revenue. But now that the, the tax due date, or sorry, the, the, um, the allowance for business to pay out further, um, it, we, it will likely reduce our penalty income. And so I'm recommending, uh, you can see, and I'm sorry, I, this should say 2019 revenue on uh, here, and this should say 2020. Somehow it didn't come across when I transferred this over to Word. And same again, um, so in 2019, our total revenue for uh, penalties was 153,000. We were budgeting for 133, a little bit less. And um, we, with the, penalty, with the uh, change in collection dates and uh, when we can lay a penalty, I believe we'll be seeing less penalty. So I'm recommending that we now budget um, 73,000 versus 133, which is a $60,000 difference. Okay, so $60,000 there and 23,000 in the item above. Yes. Questions, comments? Don't see any hands. Me. Oh, sorry, That's Councilor okay. Todd. That's okay. Um, 2019 is the actual penalty numbers we saw. Um, I don't have my last year's budget handy. What was budgeted for 2019? Do you know offhand? Uh, just if you give me a second, I can dig that up. Yes. Sure. Uh, and then a follow-up question to that uh, is that we these numbers form a regular part of our budget. They're not any sort of bonus income we receive or anything like that these are basically anticipated every year correct okay thank you it's just going to take Council me a minute so it's okay councillor mclean has a question yeah um so given that we just relaxed the rules on um late late fees this is essentially having an impact of almost a half percent tax increase correct okay so when we get that final number it's going to be a little bit higher because we've relaxed the rules uh, last year we budgeted a hundred and thirty three thousand So we were leaving the budget uh, number the same from one year to the next. Any other comments? I, I just want to follow up on that comment. What number are we going with for the budget this year? The 133 uh, or the 73? The seven, well, the, we were going with 133, but new to due to the new regulations, I think we need to be more conservative than that and come down to the 73. Okay, so that is going to have implications on the final number for taxes. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, so there's, there's a couple of ways we can go. We can look at taxing for it all. Um, I'm not so sure that's um, what council would want. Uh, we could go with a mix of maybe a half a percent increase over where we thought we would be and try to cut a little bit more out of operations. Um, staff would be happy to attempt that and um, without trying to, without harming the directions of where we're trying to get to this year. Um, there's a couple of little spots there we, we might be able to take out, uh, you know, 15, 15 or $20,000. So if we tax half a percent uh, on top of what, what, you know, I'm sitting at 3.3 .3 right now. If we went half a percent more, uh, 3.8, and then did the, some reductions in the budget, 
um, that that's an option that we could look at from staff's perspective. Mayor Seegers. Question on the penalty. When we charge the penalty, is that on the full tax bill? So property, like our property taxes, regional district property taxes, uh, school taxes, et cetera? Yes. It's on everything? Okay, so so there will, given that they, well, that's, that's a bit of an impact, reducing the commercial property tax, school tax, actually, even if they don't pay it, that reduces our penalty. Uh, penalty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Hmm. Um, all right, Council, what sort of direction would we like to give Mr. Douglas, Mayor Seegers? So what you're saying is if we uh, reduce, well, I mean, we reduce because of the, the value of the property, also taking money out for penalties, something else that that we haven't talked about, but could potentially have an impact is rental income. So we have facilities, for example, that we're not getting any revenue from. Are there other places like that where we're not getting revenue that we have included in our budget? I mean, I know that you haven't necessarily looked at all of these because all of this is moving. It's a moving target right now. It's changing so quickly. But I, I mean, one of them that we aren't getting revenue from, as I said, is the, the facilities. Are there others where, where we have money budgeted in our, you know, in our budget, put money in our budget that we know will have an impact? I guess, because, and the reason I'm going at that is, do we cut out money, cut out more money to keep it at 3.8? Or do we say, no, we know that our revenues aren't going to be what they are in other areas as well. We need to have this tax to give us that little bit of buffer for other areas where we're not going to be getting it. So are there other areas we need, we need to just have in the back of our mind as well? Um, possibly buildings uh, would be one. Um, we were going through some change there with regards to um, trying to be more active with our buildings, but we, we still didn't anticipate like the full revenue hit. Whenever we look at revenues, we try and be uh, very uh, uh, cautiously optimistic. So, you know, most of our revenues, um, you know, we have, if the market were the, the same and we, um, you, there's a good chance we might achieve a little bit better. But now that the markets are quite a bit different, there's a very good chance we, um, we may not reach the, 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 tar the revenue target. So let's just say for the Rockwood, we have budgeted 13,000 in revenue. Um, I don't know what it is year to date, and, um, uh, but will we achieve that now? You know, that's, that's probably debatable, yes. So if, so if we were to say um, 3.8% and you would cut out of others, we would still be in the ballpark with our revenues, you're thinking? Uh, a lot of our rev, well, luckily we don't, other than for building inspection and, and you know, engineering and planning, a lot of our revenues are really driven from taxation. So our garbage fees, um, flat taxes, user fees for water, uh, taxation. Um, a lot of our fees, um, other than the rentals, um, you, you know, we're not, we don't, we don't rely so heavily on, on uh, usage for, for fees. Uh, Councillor McLean. Yeah, I just wanted to drive home that point that I think in the District of Seashell, we are overly reliant on property taxes to fund all of our operations, which can be a challenge in normal years, but it's helpful in this year, um, given that um, I think the other fees are much harder to predict, mm -hmm. or other sources of revenue are much harder to predict. 
And if you compare us to say the city of Vancouver, we don't have stuff like parking fees. So that they're at a larger risk to COVID than we are um, because of all these uh, other sources of income. Whereas we're mostly a large proportion just from property tax. So for that reason, I think this is one of the easiest um, reductions we can predict. How much we're going to lose in other revenues is way harder to predict. Um, so what I'd rather see is um, accounting for that next year. So we kind of see how the year goes. Um, and if we are at a large loss by the end of the year, we need to look at addressing that for next year. But for this year, let's continue. We can't make random guesses. I think the only one that we can really do is this one in front of us, the, the revenue loss due to um, the changes we've created. Okay, Mayor Seegers, is that your hand again or? From yes, the my hand to Quinn. Okay. We cannot run a deficit though, correct? We cannot budget for a deficit. If we run a deficit, we have to charge for it immediately in the following year. Okay, so what, uh, Councillor Cooster has her hand up. Just for clarity, Matt, um, so are you saying keep the rate at the 3.3 or are you thinking the 3.8 or 3.8 that Dave was mentioning? Um, I didn't really go that far, um, but I'll say it now. I think um, it's probably prudent to go with the suggestion that Dave had earlier is go half a percent added and we can try and get staff to find a couple other sources to take care of the rest. Is that a motion? <laughs> is there further comments on this? Uh, Mayor Seegers. Okay, so if we went half a percent higher, how much money do you need to find to cut out of the budget? given the numbers you've been throwing around. Um, probably close to 35, 35 to 40,000. Did, did, well, um, without going looking at my notes, removing the website, um, did that leave us anything or was that a complete cut? Yeah, no, that was just, yeah, yeah. Didn't leave us, it, it helped with the balancing of previous discussions. Okay. Okay. Uh, Councillor McLean. Okay, so I'll make a motion to allocate a half point uh, increase in the District of Seashell taxes for this. <laughs> um, what's the title here? Uh, for reduced penalty revenue. And and changes in assessment, assessment. value. Okay. Do the recording secretary get that? I have allocate five uh, zero point five percent increase to DOS taxes for reduced penalty revenue, and there was something else to that. Uh, and changes in assessment. Mm -hmm. um, it, I don't think you can read zero point five percent. You'd have to read a half a percent or point five point five percent. Zero point five is point five percent, isn't it? Well, not when you add the word percent, because then it'll put the decimal out further. Okay. So it'd be it could be point five percent. Can the recording sec uh, secretary repeat the motion? Allocate half a percent increase to DOS taxes for reduced penalty revenue and changes in 
I didn't get that last word. I'm so sorry. In assessment value. Thank you. It's recorded. Okay. Is there a seconder? Uh, Mayor Seegers, you were seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? So moved. I believe. I mean, I, I couldn't see everybody. Were we unanimous there? Okay. Okay, item 5.5, .5, class multiples, Mr. Douglas. Okay, class multiples. Um, just a short history on the class multiples uh, within the district of Seashell. Last year, uh, this is the tax revenue we brought in in this column uh, here and the associated class um, rate multiples in the next column over. Um, this residential class is always one because it's the base uh, for the calculation. And uh, last year, the business and other class multiple was at 2.39 times the residential rate. And um, that has been something that a lot of municipalities have been looking at and watching closely as they, they, uh, they like to see the health of their community, business community, not uh, overpay taxation uh, from, from an average, let's say in the, in the, in, with OB, within BC. Um, if we were to keep the class multiples very similar uh, to last year, um, the class six business class would pay uh, significantly more uh, tax dollars, although their multiple would stay the same. And that's due to the fact that the residential uh, taxable values or tax values uh, came down 5% this year and the business um, assessments went up 2%. So just in that little flow um, of uh, the assessment values changing, uh, what that would lead to is business paying significantly more tax, more than 3.3 uh, or 3.8% uh, if we were to leave it like that. Um, obviously, there's, you know, I, I took and made a couple, you know, looked at a couple different options. Um, this one was trying to set the tax multiple for business at 2.3 times the residential. Uh, once again, that, that leaves this value higher, greater than the 3.3% that we were at prior. And uh, further example here is uh, I took last year's revenues. I, I added the 3.3% to all of the revenues in each class. And then I figured the multiple of what it would look, out, look like to that. And so if we went with a 2.23 business multiple, um, it would bring in the same revenue plus the 3.3% uh, that we had planned uh, for business class uh, for this year. So my recommendation would be, we would be hovering. I don't think we can make a motion to 2.23 because with the extra half a percent, this, this all may slightly change a little bit. It, it won't be a, a gross change from this, but if we, followed this plan of just adding the percentage uh, that we're looking to lift taxation to each class, it will keep this in a, a reasonable state. Any questions? Oh, sorry, Mayor Seegers, I see your hand is up. Thank you. So what you're saying is it, it'll come in somewhere around 2.23. It might be 2.25, might be 2.24, somewhere in there. Uh, but you, what you would do is take the amount of tax they paid last year, add on that 3.8 or whatever that number turns out to be once you've done the adjustments. Correct. And then that would determine what the tax multiplier would be. 
Correct. Okay. And so okay. just so you know, it will reduce it from the three two point three nine and bring it very close to this two point two three. Okay. And that's really holding every class, every property class to a very similar level of tax they paid last year, plus new construction, plus the lift. Councillor McLean. Yeah, so just so we're 100% clear, we are looking at essentially increasing everyone by the same amount um, and not, not penalizing it, the residential for losing value or penalizing the commercial for the residential losing value. Um, so we do all the math and everyone has a proportionate increase. So, and in addition to that, no one has a further decrease. Um, it's all very similar. Correct. Very, very similar to previous levels of taxation. It's keeping the taxation stream on a very, fairly level playing field uh, without peaks and valleys from year to year. Uh, Mayor Seegers. Okay, so at this point, are you looking at anything from us? Or are you just are you just looking would to us to say, do we want it any different than that? Correct. And if we don't want it if we don't want it different, you don't need us to make any motions at this point. My you know my I, this is this is what I would have this is what I've shown in the budget so far this slide, and this is how I would continue to go forward. Okay. Unless, unless we want to peg one of the multipliers to something. I'm, I'm good with what you're doing. Okay. As am I. Does council have any um, wishes to see things go down a different road? I think you're on the right track, Mr. Douglas, from the looks of things. Okay, um, thank you. So that's it for that one. So 5.6 sewer, sewer user fees. So from our discussions, uh, previous budget discussions, I just want to update council where the fees will reside around. Uh, we talked about, we talked uh, through a list of some cutting and some things we want to maintain in the budget. Um, so after I, I went through that process, um, these are the these are the increases that we would see to the user the sewer user fees. So we'd be going from 371 in residential to 494, which is a $123 increase. Senior citizens from 228 to 304, which is a $76 increase. And commercial rate from 780 to 1041, which is a $261 increase parcel taxes would remain the same as they had been. Questions, comments? Uh, Councillor Lamb. Um, so the Seashell Indian government takes, uh, we take their septage. And so if they're a user of our of, of our, you know, our plant, of our system, the same as these users here. So is our contract that if we have with them, is there a, an option in there for uh, an increase like this or not? Um, I, I don't think there is. There is uh, some options in there for discussion with the, um, within the contract. Uh, last year, their, their fees went up um, I, I don't know the dollar value off the top of my head, um, but we will definitely have discussion um, with them down the road. Okay. How, how long is that contract with them or do you know? I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay. And uh, yeah, because I believe that their, uh, their uh, charge is, is, uh, I guess the, I'm not really too sure how to say it, but the value of their bill or the charge that we send them is is valued on the reading from uh, my understanding is that there is a meter that is 
that is readable that you can, uh, you know, you can obviously, uh, um, you can obviously, uh, um, you know, follow the flow. If, if, if it's 10,000 meters last year and 12,000 cubic meters this year, then you know there's an increase. Do we do we have records of the flow from those meters? And and are and are we charging from the flow from that meter? Um, what I can do is we can bring the. Uh contents of that contract over to uh, Committee of the Whole in the future and go through that and see what it looks like. Yeah, yeah I just, you know, I'm just, I'm just looking, you know, I, I, I mean, these are big increases in this time and, and, and I'm just kind of looking for, is there any help from anybody else out there that could use or whatever, so that's all. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Okay, Madam Chair, this was just um, provided for information, so I'm not looking for any uh, direction or anything. It looks like we're done with this item then, Mr. Douglas. Okay. So 5.7 property tax notice sample. So, um, so this is uh, just a, look at um, where we sat uh, the other day um, with regards to increases. I have uh, the information now from the SCRD, hospital, BCAA, and MFA. So these have all been updated uh, to that. Um, I've also just I've in included here the, um, well, the 3.3%, so this will go up just a little bit more. Um, I've also included in this analysis is the fact that this property would have come down in value uh, from last year to this year. Um, so in the end, uh, you're looking at, uh, there was no change uh, for the hospital, BCA and MFA. Uh, the school tax, I do not have yet. Uh, so you're looking at about an $84 difference here for taxation in total. Uh, and uh, then the $123 for um, the, um, the sewer. So this is, this is um, under the assumption that the class multiple stayed the same as it, um, as, as the same as a probably poor language. It should have said the class multiple stays at 2.39 for business, okay? And, um, and we know that's going to change. Um, so then the second slide, which is where you would really see this difference in that multiple. Um, this, this is a commercial property. If we'd have left the multiple at 2.39% or 3.9 times, uh, the value of the tax for municipal purposes would have gone up $460. So that's where, that's where this change in assessment uh, would have really affected this class because this class would have paid so much more of the percentage of taxes if we had left the multiple at 2.39 times. So uh, we're not doing this. So we don't have to worry about this number, right? This is just if we had um, the SRD, um, $161, uh, user fees, $261. Now, this uh, school tax, we we think we know the number. Once again, this is an estimate. So the school tax are going to be going from $3,330 down to 1665 leaving a credit uh, to this business over last year. So in total, this business here would pay $783 less than it did last year uh, with our increases and the reduction to school tax. Hey, Councillor Todd has a, his hands up. Okay. Um, I noticed in the first slide that showed the residential, uh, the fire protection district was not included in there. Um, is it lumped in with one of those or was it just missed? Oh, no, yeah. yeah, it looks like it was missed. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, but that, that total at the bottom is just what's shown on the screen or does that include the fire protection district? Do you know offhand? No. 
No, that's just what's in the uh, on the slide. Okay, thank you. I made sure it balanced last night, but I, I don't know. I can tell you that. So you give me half a second. I know the new numbers only just came in, you mentioned, so. Yeah, and I've um, done the calculation. Um, Okay, so the fire protection, fire protection on this house uh, last year would have been $211. And with the new rate, it would go up $11, so it'd be $222. Okay, and then the other thing is, so we're back to this one. So now this is more along the lines of where we're going to be going with uh, adjusting, not adjusting the not holding the class multiple to anything in general, just applying the increase to each class. Um, so uh, the property here, once again, I didn't include the fire district, but it would be $222. The municipal tax uh, would go up $71. The SCRD, $28. And um, there's 123 for sewer. So you're looking at $222 increase uh, for residents under the way we're going to move forward, uh, plus $10 for the fire district, so $230. When we come to a commercial property, um, once again, the credit from the school tax, uh, you would see the municipal taxes go up about $156, the SRD 161. Uh, all these stay the same except for the fire protection on a business will go up uh, will go up seventy six dollars and so um, so what I have on the screen here you're looking at this business uh, paying a thousand eighty seven less this year than it did last year. So that's that's all I had for my my slides and discussion. Um, we are planning to move forward next Wednesday with a uh, Zoom public meeting. Two one two meet two kind of two meetings in one night. Uh, we're going to start at uh, 4:30 on the first one and go till six, and then the second one we'd start at 6:30 and go to eight. And I will do a presentation summing up uh, the discussions and uh, motions and agreements of council towards the budget uh, at a higher level. We'll be showing the five-year financial plan. We'll discuss how much capital, how it's being funded. Um, but I don't intend to go into each and every project with uh, on Zoom that, that could take me an hour to run through the whole budget process. Um, my intention is to speak for about half an hour-ish and um, try and uh, push out as much information as possible in that half an hour and allow for some questions uh, on, on Zoom. Uh, we'll be advertising this through our website and through our social media uh, for the Wednesday Zoom meeting. Okay, a couple questions, Mr. Uh, Douglas. Uh, Councillor McLean. Yeah, for the uh, public consultation, um, last year we had a really nice summary of where all of the changes came from in the operating budget. Yes. Um, so I, I think with all the, we've gone through so many meetings, to have that all listed in one spot would be incredibly helpful. Okay, and so usually mine will just include the bigger changes, like if salaries change by $100 or $80, I'm not going to put those types of changes in. Yeah, uh, like you, you yeah, can definitely group wages. Yeah, but I'll but keep then, the, the, the bigger items. Uh, you know, if we bump something by 10 grand, I'll probably discuss that, but not something that's three and a half or four. 
Perfect. And then same thing with the capital, highlighting some of the larger capital projects we want to take on. Perfect. Perfect. Councillor Todd? Yeah, I just wanted to ask, so you said you're going to do two sessions on the Wednesday night, one before, um, yeah, one earlier and then one later. Um, are the content of those meetings going to be identical? So it'd be like a, a daytime meeting and then an evening meeting? Identical, yes. Okay, uh, and then a follow-up question to that is, are you planning on YouTube streaming either of those? I believe we would do it the same as a council meeting or community hall meeting, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Any other questions, council? Uh, Mayor Seegers. Thank you. Um, Mr. Douglas, do you have the answers to the questions that you need at this point? I think I do. That's a good thing. I'm, pre I'm pretty <laughs> sure I, I have to, and I, I, I do have all the answers I think I need to move forward. Um, we just, um, yeah, I do. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Thank you. Councillor McLean. So as you scroll madly, I just want to go back to uh, one of the later pages uh, that provide the example uh, tax rates. So allow you to scroll back down there. Perfect. Um, so the parcel tax and the user fees, does that include a CRD parcel tax and user fees? Yeah. It yeah. does. Okay. Yeah. In including the water user fee, which would be. Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because that that had quite an increase in the last year, so I think it was a something like one hundred and thirty dollars. Um, yeah, I didn't. I I did only use the variable change of variable rate taxes. I didn't have time to dip into all this. Uh, into the new parcel taxes from the region. Okay, because yeah, they definitely made a, a large change uh, with the water user fee. Okay. Yeah. One, my presentation next week, it'll be on there as the new charge. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Mayor Seegers. I just want to say thank you. I know that the last month, or mo yeah, probably month and a bit, has been really challenging. Not only has the economic environment in our community changed, which, you know, we then came to you and said, change the budget after all the work you've put in, but then the province is, has been changing a lot of things in the last while. and may continue to change things over the next couple of weeks. And you're having to be you know, responsive to whatever is being thrown at you. So thank you for your patience and thank you for your forbearance and thank you for hanging in there with us and for thank what you're bringing forward. Thank you. Thank you. And on that note, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Second, all in favor. Now we're gonna say goodbye to YouTube.